Greetings, everyone. Happy Sunday. So many of you have been asking who will be receiving $300 monthly payments from the IRS this summer. There are millions of Americans that are eligible to receive this financial relief. I'll be going over the eligibility requirements to receive these payments in today's video. There is also a provision in President Joe Biden's American Rescue Plan that is now requiring health insurers to send out checks to consumers. I'll be sharing more on that later in this video. Thank you so much everyone for being here today. The two winners of this week's $75 Amazon gift card giveaway are Rhonda Sanders and Mr. William Collins. Congratulations to both of you. Next Friday evening, I will be giving away more $75 Amazon gift cards. To enter the giveaway, all you have to do is subscribe to my channel, share and like this video, and leave a comment below. Thank you so much, everyone. Alrighty, everyone. So Democratic Senator Joe Manchin is now saying that he does not support a bill to make Washington, D.C. the 51st state. This is dooming the measure's chances in the Senate. Senator Manchin argued that D.C. statehood should be addressed with a constitutional amendment. During an interview with the West Virginia Metro News Radio Network, Joe Manchin said, If Congress wants to make D.C. a state, it should propose a constitutional amendment and let the people of America vote. The House approved the bill, H.R. 51, along party lines last month to create the state of Washington. It would give D.C. two U.S. Senators and a voting representative in the House, just like every state. So what do you think, everyone? Should Washington, D.C. become the 51st state? Please leave your thoughts in the comment section below. The bill now goes to the Senate, where Democrats hold a 50-seat majority. Most legislation in the Senate requires 60 votes to advance, and the bill was already unlikely to garner support from 10 Republicans. This means the chances of it passing were slim, even before Manchin voiced his opposition. However, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer has committed to bring the measure to the floor for a vote. In my opinion, I think lawmakers should be focusing on bigger things, like a fourth stimulus bill. The government estimates that the number is over $230,000 per child, and that is not including college. The child tax credit was originally implemented over two decades ago to lessen the financial burden. But millions of parents and guardians are about to receive some more help from the government. The $1.9 trillion American Rescue Plan increases the child tax credit from $2,000 up to $3,600, depending on the child's age and the family's income. So qualifying parents will not have to wait for their tax refunds to see that money either. Payments will be issued on a monthly basis starting this July. According to the stimulus package, the IRS will pay out $3,600 per year for each child up to five years old, and $3,000 per year for each child ages six through 17. If you have children, please make sure that the IRS has your correct information on file. Payments will be issued automatically on a monthly basis from July of this year to December of this year. IRS Commissioner Charles Redding recently confirmed a July launch with payments going out on a monthly basis. The Internal Revenue Service will pay $500 for dependents age 18 or full-time college students up to the age of 24, but only once. So that is great news for anyone that is over the age of 17. Payments will be based on the adjusted gross income reflected on a parent or parent's 2020 tax filing. The amount phases out at a rate of $50 for every $1,000 of annual income beyond $75,000 for individuals, and beyond $150,000 for married couples. The benefit will be fully refundable. Qualifying families will receive the full amount, regardless of how much or little they owe in taxes. There is no limit to the number of dependents that can be claimed. I'm really excited and happy that families will be receiving additional relief from the government. But one negative aspect is that the newly revised child tax credit will last only one year. The rules of reconciliation, which Democrats used to pass the stimulus package containing the expanded child credit with a simple majority, do not allow for deficit spending. But President Biden has since come out in supporting extending the enhanced credit 
until the year 2025 as part of his American Families Plan. Among the proposals in President Joe Biden's recently announced American Families Plan is an indefinite extension of the expanded Obamacare subsidies that was originally passed in March. According to analysts from the Kaiser Family Foundation, private insurance companies are also expected to send out $2.1 billion in rebates to more than 10.7 million policyholders this fall. The sum will be the second highest amount ever issued under the Affordable Care Act after last year's record-breaking $2.5 billion in refunds. So this is great news for millions of policyholders. For the average consumer who bought health insurance on the individual market, that means an average cash rebate of $299 in the fall. These rebates are coming through because a number of insurance companies failed to meet the Affordable Cares Act medical loss ratio, which is a threshold in 2020, which also requires insurers to spend at least 80% of premium revenues on healthcare claims or quality improvement activities. According to Yahoo Finance, the rebates work out to be about $299 per plan member in the individual market. That's $127 per member in the small group market and $95 per member in the large group market. This extra money could be used to catch up on some bills, rent, or household expenses. Another issue should, that should unite us is infrastructure. Republicans support everything you think of when you think of infrastructure. Roads, bridges, ports, airports, waterways, high-speed broadband, we're in for all of that. But again, Democrats want a partisan wish list they won't even build bridges to build bridges. Less than 6% of the president's plan goes to roads and bridges. It's a liberal wish list of big government waste, plus the biggest job-killing tax hikes in a generation. Experts say when all is said and done, it would lower wages of the average American worker and shrink our economy. Tonight, we also heard about a so-called family plan, even more taxing, even more spending, to put Washington even more in the middle of your life, from the cradle to college. The beauty of the American dream is that families get to define it for themselves. We should be expanding opportunities and options for all families, not throwing money at certain issues because Democrats think they know best infrastructure spending that shrinks our economy is not common sense. Weakening our southern borders and creating a crisis is not compassionate. The president is also abandoning principles he's held for decades. Now he says your tax dollars should fund abortions. He's laying groundwork to pack the Supreme Court. This is not common ground. So everyone, that is the end of the video for now. I hope you found this video helpful today. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll do my very best to answer any questions that you may have. Please don't forget to enter the $75 Amazon gift card giveaway by subscribing to my channel, liking and sharing this video, and leaving a comment below. Thank you so much everyone and have a very, very blessed day.